the more we process plastic, the more plastic we make, the more we emit carbon dioxide. So it's driving climate change. So the important thing for me is that we use materials responsibly to minimise our use of resources, leave more for future generations and help mitigate climate change. The Ellen MacArthur Foundation reckon that 20% of packaging can be made reusable, yet, as it stands at the moment, less than 2% is. Many Happy Returns is a project that looks at reusable packaging. So it could be for takeaways, it could be for coffee, it could be for all sorts of different things. Um, and really we're looking at how can we make reusable packaging more mainstream. We have created a system for reusing takeaway food at the university. It's gaining momentum, it's been used over a thousand times so far, so actually in concrete terms that's a thousand single-use containers that haven't been used. If you use a container 20 times, that environmental burden is just 5% of what it was if it, that container was used once. In terms of the materials, we're interested in how the bowls behave in a reuse system. So these bowls are going to be scratched during use and they're also going to be stained uh, with food. Using a, a cut brush and a known force will scratch the bowl quite heavily, but that isn't necessarily indicative of a real use scenario. So I've also been scratching them by hand. After scratching and after staining, we then wash the container in the commercial dishwasher and then analyse the wastewater for microplastic contamination. We've been uh, scratching, staining and washing each container 30 times and at each point we've been taking a photo. We're going to pass those images to psychology and they'll be then showing members of the general public. One of the specific issues we've looked at is the extent to which people are worried about um, contamination and the extent to which they're willing to reuse things that um, show signs of wear. We've put it into the power dump that we developed and we've identified um, the point at which people say no, it's too dirty for me, I wouldn't reuse that. We can then design packages that don't end up looking like this after they've been used many times. The piece of work that we do within the Many Happy Returns project looks at the environmental impacts of reusable packaging all the way from the start to the end of their life. If we didn't do the life cycle assessment, we wouldn't know whether we, what we were doing was actually better for the environment or not. And as we do the assessment, we might find that there's a hot spot somewhere and a hot spot might be an area where we could say actually there's a lot of energy used there so there's a big carbon footprint and by highlighting that hot spot it then tells us that's the area we need to work on going forward to try and improve it, reduce the impacts to make it even better. One of the aims is to bring to bear um, behavioural science which is an approach to understanding and changing people's behaviour. Fundamentally the plastics problem isn't a plastics problem, it's a people problem and it's how people use plastics and how they dispose of them that's the issue. So what we want to understand is how people interact with plastics. A lot of the time the question is how do we change the consumer or how do we change consumer behaviour and is consumer behaviour willing to engage with reuse. From the household work that we've been doing we're actually finding that they're already doing the things that retailers and sort of businesses want them to do. the geography part I guess of what we're doing is getting out there into real world settings seeing how people go shopping uh, unpack the goods when they get home use their kitchens do some cooking how they waste goods or how they recycle things or how they reuse them and so I noticed you've got particular jars or that's right yes specific jars for yes specific. Yeah, that's quite an interesting thing to understand is do you know how many times you're reusing the bags themselves um, or probably I should think probably after about three uses they'll start to get either dirty or torn or you know I just don't want to keep taking a new bag every time I go there people feel very guilty for for consuming and for purchasing plastic and a lot of the time they will beat themselves up about it or put themselves down that can lead to them disengaging. We listen carefully to what people say not just the content of what people say but how they say it because that often gives us insights into again the kind of limits to which people will be able to engage and the more you understand that logic the better the interventions will be.
one of the things that we're starting to think about, and this is with the, the work package, the language work package, is how do we start to um, encourage um, and not result in a burnout of disengaging with this situation? Do we need to start thinking more empathetically? Nobody wants to damage the environment. Nobody wants to throw plastic out and use lots of single-use plastic. But what consumers feel and what we can see in the language that they use is that they're feeling very frustrated in their efforts to make different choices. What they would like to see is supermarkets taking more responsibility. We gather lots and lots of linguistic evidence in one place so that we can use computer software to see immediately and clearly those sorts of patterns of shared language use emerging in a population or in a community. Altogether, we gathered over five and a half million words of linguistic data so that we can see really clearly how people are actually talking about plastics in their everyday lives and how that might tell us something about how they think about plastics and their kind of, their motivations and their choices that they're making around reuse and recycling. And once we know that, we can make changes to the language that we use to encourage more pro-environmental behaviours. The language thing just really resonated with me. What I did was took phrases, quotes from research linguists were doing, and they're all conflicted statements. They all pivot around the word but. Lynn was able to see how those lines in a computer program are actually expressing something really fundamental about our relationship with plastics. We're all very confused and conflicted about plastic and its place in society. We can't really do without it now. We've got used to the idea that we can do our shopping once a week and the food will keep. And unless we want to go back to the 1950s, where women stayed at home and shopped every day and cooked every evening with fresh food, we've got a problem. So we can't remove plastic from our world. What we have to do is find different ways to use it more wisely and interact with it better. I think what linguistics can really offer STEM researchers and STEM subjects is a perspective on how we take that really important research in science, technology, engineering and so on and communicate it better. It's really important with projects like this that we join lots of disciplines together because to be sustainable it's not just about the environment. We also have to have people engaging with it, it has to be easy for people to engage with it or they won't do it and it also has to be economically beneficial. People won't engage with something if it costs more, even if it might be better for the environment. And it's only by bringing all those aspects together that we can then find the best reuse system that people will engage with and is better for the environment and is cheaper for people. The goal for us is to drive business and behaviour change through evidence. And we provide the evidence, provide the materials and the business models in order that that might happen.